Hey everybody, welcome to the Web Arcade Overview and Walkthrough video. In this video, we're going to walk through the Web Arcade front end, we'll import some custom feeds, play some games, and browse some of the documentation, including showing you how to create your own Web Arcade feed. The page we're currently viewing is the Web Arcade homepage. You can navigate to it by going to web, the letter R, cade, C -A -D -E, dot com. Before we get started, let's quickly discuss what Web Arcade is. Probably the easiest way to do that is to discuss its distinctive features. First off, all of the games run natively in the browser. They're not streamed. Using a combination of technologies that includes JavaScript, WebAssembly, and the Audio and Gamepad APIs. Next, Web Arcade utilizes a modern, responsive, web-based front end. That front end allows Web Arcade to scale and adapt to a wide variety of platforms that includes Windows, Mac, iOS, Android, and the Xbox Series XS gaming consoles. Web Arcade also includes native gamepad support for both playing games and when navigating the front end. Popular USB and Bluetooth controllers from PlayStation, Xbox, and 8BitDo are supported. Since the front end is web-based, touch, mouse, and keyboard navigation are also supported. The Web Arcade platform itself supports an extensible set of applications that will grow and expand over time. The current applications include popular Atari, Sega, and Nintendo emulators. Finally, the last and probably most distinguishing feature of Web Arcade is its feed-based approach. All of the content for populating the front end and when playing games is collected from cloud-based resources based on Web Arcade feeds. Resources like Imager, the Internet Archive, Dropbox, and Pastebin can all be used to create custom Web Arcade feeds. This essentially means that all game content, which includes ROM files, or images that are displayed in the front end are collected from cloud-based resources rather than being stored locally. Alright, with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started. But before I do, let me go ahead and open the documentation in a separate tab so we can refer to it later. And at this point we can just go ahead and click the play button to display the Web Arcade front end. It's also worth noting that you don't necessarily have to go to the Web Arcade homepage. You can go directly to play.webarcade.com. At this point I'm going to go ahead and switch away from my mouse and use the Xbox controller to navigate the Web Arcade front end. Web Arcade will automatically return to the last feed that was loaded. In this particular case, we're looking at the default feed, which consists of excellent homebrew titles across the various application types that are supported by Web Arcade. One aspect of the feed includes how games are organized and displayed. In the default feed, games are grouped by the system they're associated with. Let's go ahead and drill into the Super Nintendo category and view the Super Nintendo homebrew titles that are contained in the default feed. Let's go ahead and play one of my favorite Super Nintendo homebrew games, Super Boss Got N by Dieter Von Laser and Chrono Moogle. In addition to this game being a lot of fun to play, it also has a really interesting game development history and backstory. The game was originally released on the Super Disk format, which was intended for the Nintendo PlayStation prototype. Later it was released on a standard Super Nintendo ROM. The game's backstory focuses on the Nintendo PlayStation prototype being released to the public and ultimately hacked by homebrewers. You play the role of the Sony boss, and when he finds out, he gets really mad and runs around destroying everything. Alright, so here we go, let's destroy everything. The game includes a lot of PlayStation mascots and memorabilia. Toward the beginning we run into Sackboy from Little Big Planet. There's Sackboy. Well, I guess you can't destroy everything. Okay, so at this point, let's go ahead and exit to the pause screen. The way to do that will depend on the type of platform you're on and the type of input mechanism you're using. For example, with the keyboard, you can simply hit the escape key. If you're using a controller, there are various button combinations that you can use to get to the menu. 
so please refer to the WebRCAD documentation for more details. The pause menu currently only contains two items, either resume or return to the WebRCAD front end. In the future, application and game-specific settings will be added to the screen. At this point, let's go ahead and exit back to the WebRCAD front end. Let's navigate away from the Games or Items view back to the Categories view. To do this, you simply select the flyout directly above the thumbnail slider. We're now back at the Category view. Let's go ahead and select the Sega Genesis category to view the Genesis Homebrew titles. Let's go ahead and play the excellent homebrew puzzler, Old Towers by Retro Souls. This game has some great graphics and sound. Each level in the game is a puzzle where you have to grab the coins, avoid being killed, and find the exit. As you can see, the levels are pretty amazing looking and the sound is great. The levels start out pretty easy, and they increase with difficulty as you progress. When you pass through the clear squares, they turn solid so you can't go back through them again. Level 5 is coming up and it has a really cool play mechanic. Alright, so look in the corners you can see these triangular shapes. They cause the player to ricochet uncontrollably throughout the playfield. Okay, at this point, let's go ahead and exit back to the WebRCAD front end. At this point, we're going to go ahead and register a new WebRCAD feed with the front end. To do that, let's go back to the Categories view like we did before. And then let's navigate away from the Categories view to the Feeds view. To do this, you select a flyout directly above the thumbnail slider like we did in the Categories view. The Feeds view contains all the feeds that were previously registered. It's also the location where you can register new feeds with the WebRCAD front end. There will always be at least two items in the feeds view. The first item allows you to add new feeds. The second item is the default feed. That's the feed we were viewing earlier. All right, so let's go ahead and add a new feed. First select the Add Feed thumbnail, and then select the Add button. This dialog allows you to register the URL of a WebRCAD feed. Let's go ahead and register the URL of the example feed, which is part of the WebRCAD documentation. Once the URL has been entered, go ahead and select the OK button and the feed will automatically be loaded. This feed is fairly simple. It only contains two categories where the games are organized by genre. It's also worth noting that this feed is being freely hosted using several different cloud resources. The feed document itself is hosted in Pastebin, the images are hosted in Imager, the ROM files are hosted in a free Dropbox account, and the human readable URL is provided by tinyurl. All right, so let's go ahead and select the puzzle games category. Now, if you watch near my cursor as I switch between the different titles, you'll see the name of the application that's associated with the game changes as I switch between them. For example, as you can see, this particular game is associated with the Atari 7800 emulator or application. If I switch to another game, you'll see that that particular game is associated with the Super Nintendo emulator or application. All right, at this point, let's go ahead and return to the WebRCAD documentation tab that we opened earlier. Let's select the Applications tab within the documentation, and then select the SNES application on the left. Each application's documentation will include control mappings for keyboard and gamepads. It will also include information about persistent storage, such as cartridge SRAM, if applicable. Finally, the documentation will include information on how to add instances of the application to a WebRCAD feed. Now, let's go ahead and walk through the process to remove the feed that we just added to the WebRCAD front end. To do that, let's first return to the Categories view, and then let's return to the Feeds view. 
At this point, let's go ahead and select the example feed, and then go ahead and select the delete button. When prompted to delete the feed, go ahead and select the yes button. At this point, the feed has been removed. Let's go ahead and select the default feed again and load it. The default feed has been loaded once again. The remainder of this video will be a high level walkthrough of the WebArcade documentation. Let's go ahead and take a quick look at the About page. The About page includes some high level information about what WebArcade is and what it is not. It also includes a set of getting started steps at the bottom that includes looking at the user guide, looking at the documentation for the specific platform you're using, and then for applications that are launched, looking at the documentation to see what the control mappings are and any other relevant information. Next, let's go take a quick look at the user guide. The user guide contains documentation and control mappings for the common user interface components. It also documents the various views, the items, categories, and feeds views. Finally, it includes information on the various screens that you'll find throughout the Web Arcade application, including the Add Feeds dialog and the Pause screen. Alright, so let's go ahead and take a look at the Platform section. A platform refers to the device or operating system that you're using with Web Arcade. We'll go ahead and take a look at the iOS platform documentation. Each section describes how to optimize the Web Arcade experience for that particular device. The iOS platform documentation indicates the recommended browser, which is Safari. The documentation also includes how to add WebArcade to the iOS home screen. Next, let's take a quick look at the iOS gamepad section. Each gamepad section includes a browser compatibility matrix with various gamepad controllers. The iOS gamepad section also includes instructions for how to disable the gamepad screen recording button, in addition to describing alternate buttons that are available for the various controllers on the iOS platform. Finally, there is a dedicated section for each gamepad shown in the previous matrix. Each of these sections describes how to pair that particular Bluetooth controller with iOS. Now let's take a quick look at the application section. We looked at the application section earlier when we viewed the SNES. Application sections include details about that particular application, which can be an emulator or game engine. Primarily, it will focus on controller mappings, information related to any data that's persistently stored, and it includes details describing how to add particular instances of that application to WebArcade feeds. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the feed section. The feed section includes detailed information related to building and sharing your own WebArcade feeds. There are subsections that describe the WebArcade JSON format, a tutorial that walks step-by-step -step through building a complete WebArcade feed, and there's a section that describes how to utilize various web-based resources in a WebArcade feed. The feed format subsection contains detailed information about the WebArcade JSON format. Each of the objects in the JSON format are described in detail. These details include complete JSON examples along with visuals depicting how they will be rendered in the WebArcade front end. A complete example is shown at the end of the subsection. In fact, this example feed is what we registered with WebArcade earlier in this video. The Resources section contains detailed information describing how to utilize various cloud-based resources in a WebArcade feed. Sections currently exist for Dropbox, Imager, the Internet Archive, Pastebin, and TinyURL. Now let's take a quick look at the Internet Archive section. The Internet Archive section describes how to search for game content, how to properly navigate into various archive formats, how to extract links properly. Finally, it includes a complete WebArcade feed example that includes a ROM from the Internet Archive. Thanks a lot for watching this video. Please go ahead and play some games on WebArcade.com. Maybe create and share a WebArcade feed, or join us on GitHub and contribute to the WebArcade project or join the discussions. Thanks again.